Hello and welcome to Unit 3 using data sources. My name is Sara Krasmi and I'm part of SME product management team for intelligent processes. In the previous units, you have learned about key concepts of ML workflow, such as data set, model, and model evaluation. Regarding ML data sets, we have mentioned that machine learning cockpit uses analytical data source as ML data set. So the purpose of this unit is to explain it in detail. So let's get started. More specifically in this unit, we will explain what these basic data sources are and how MLC uses them for training and prediction data sets. We will discuss expected properties and qualities of data sources and their data. And we will conclude by explaining what other data sources a part of basic data sources are supported and what are not. Let's begin. On technical level, every business document is represented as business object having hierarchical structure. There is always one root node which represents document header and some child node type. Typically, there is always one child node that represents document items. These child nodes can have even their own child node. For example, in case of sales code, all sales code header attributes are stored in root node and all sales code item attributes are stored in item child node. The problem is that ML datasets do not support hierarchical structures. They require simple tabular format. So MLC cannot work with business objects directly. Thankfully, business analytics provide flattened tabular version of business object data, which is called basic data source. Moreover, these basic data sources are represented internally, also as SAP HANA views, which is data format the PAL library can work with. Here, every data source requires an anchor node, which determines unique identifier or key field of the data. That's why there is one basic data source for sales code header and another one for sales code item. One consideration, due to one to end relationship of header item, the header level data source cannot include information from item level. On the other hand, item level data sources can include information from its header level. So in sales code item data source, we will find fields also from sales code header. Now the selection of type of data source, whether it's on header level or item level or some other business object node level, determines where we will be able to consume ML predictions in the end. If we want to see predictions in document header, we need to use header level data source. If we want to see predictions on document items, then we need to use item level data source. In case of our sales code prediction, we chose item level. We prefer item level because as discussed earlier, header level does not contain information about items. And we believe that information like product type, product, quantity, price, etc. can be factors that influence sales code outcome. Now let's talk about training and prediction data set. In previous unit, you have learned that ML workflow needs two data sets. One, which is used for training ML model, that is called training data set, and another one on which predictions are made. So what does it mean for MLC? Do we need to select two different data sources? Well, the answer is simply no. MLC uses one and the same data source for both training and prediction. But training and prediction data set is differentiated depending on different rows of the data. For example, in case of sales code use case, we will train ML model on rows that correspond to closed documents, since their business outcome, won and lost, as shown in the table, is already known. And we will make predictions on row that correspond to open documents, 
with unknown outcome. Let's further discuss what properties of data source we should pay attention to. Number of fields. Number of fields should be sufficient, somewhere between 10 to 100, but of course it depends on the data set as quality is more important than quantity. The same set of fields that is used for training is also to be used for predictions, with an exception of training field, because training field is the one that is predicted. It is not used directly in making the prediction, so it is not used in prediction data set. Data volume. The more fields there are in the data set, the more rows are required. This is because each value of the field needs to have certain amount of samples from which model algorithm can train regarding target field values. Make sure there are at least two classes in training data set. Ideally, their distribution is balanced, which means size of the classes is comparable and values of the target field in prediction data set do not matter because target field anyway is not used during the prediction process. Input field values. Number of distinct values for input fields must be at least two as well because from one field model cannot learn as it will be constant value no matter what the target field outcome is. So in order to find the relationship between the input fields and the target fields, there should be certain amount of different values in the input fields. But it's also important that it should not be too high. It's also important to note that values and their statistical distribution should be similar in both the training and prediction data set. Because as the data has certain values in some stages of the business process, for example, while the opportunity or code is open, fields have certain values. But once it is closed, the fields may have different values. And this will be a problem because model has learned to recognize values which it has seen in the training phase. So good performing model, despite it has higher accuracy in the training, also to be able to make good predictions requires that prediction data set itself behaves similar like the training data set behaves. An example might be that even for the code, you have a related field coming from sales order document. So this field has some reasonable values in the training data set because for the closed code, you have some ordered documents. But when the code is open, there is no order yet. So all the fields coming from the order would be empty. Now you should also know what fields to avoid and what fields to consider within a data set. You should avoid following fields. Fields for which number of distinct values is very high example data set IDs as such fields won't help in model training fields with empty or constant value as they are not useful as well and also fields for which values in the training data set and prediction data set are completely different as mentioned in the last slide it's very important that values and their statistical distribution are similar in both the training and prediction data set now fields that you need to consider are as follows. Fields with non-tail distribution. It means you cannot avoid such fields, but it depends whether they are critically required for the use case and also how long the tail distribution is. So in case most of the data still has sufficient occurrences, there's still some small tail that does not matter, you will cut it as an outlier. But if the distribution is more even, that is, all values are occurring at rare frequency, then such a long tail fields which are too long are not really useful. So fields with long tail distribution needs to be considered from the use case perspective and also from the statistical perspective. Fields containing year can be used depending on use days. For example, sales quote items success use days 
training on previous year will not help make prediction for current and future dates. And for customer ABC classification, predictions are relevant for any unfilled ABC classification, irrespective of time. Now let's discuss types of supported joins. Join data sources, which have all constituent data sources of basic type and which include cloud data source, are supported. Anchor data source is the first data source that you specify in the join. And it's important. It must always be basic data source because it defines primary key field. Here it is important to remember that in the join, cloud data source must be a member and not an anchor. As mentioned earlier, anchor data source provides key to resulting joint data source. That is, if, par if parent and child data sources are to be joined in a one-to-end -one relationship, the child data source must be set as an anchor which is primary key of the joint data source will be primary key of anchor data source, which means order is very important to consider here. For example, in case of quote item and quote header data source, always first comes quote items and then header. The data sources such as combined data source is not supported at all. Cloud data source is not supported directly but is only supported via joins. And also the following list of basic data sources is not supported. Let's quickly now summarize here what we have discussed regarding training and prediction data set. For training data set, number of fields should be sufficient, but quality is more important than quantity. The more fields there are in the data set, the more rows are required. And target field must have at least two classes. Ideally, their distribution is balanced. Input fields with empty or constant value are not useful. IDs and fields with high cardinality are not useful as well. And fields containing year can be used depending on use case. Regarding prediction data set, Number of fields should be the same as in the training data set. There is no restriction regarding data volume. And for target field, all values can be null as it is not used for making prediction. Distribution of values in input fields should be similar to data distribution in training data set. And fields that are all empty or constant are not useful, even if they contain values in training data set. This concludes our unit, in which you learned how to select data source for MLC scenarios, what types of data sources are supported and what not, and what properties of data source to pay attention to. Equipped with this knowledge, you are now ready for the next units, in which you will be creating your first scenario. Thank you for your attention.